Okay, so in this video we are going to move on to Newton's second law and we're going to use Newton's second law a bunch in subsequent problems, but we're just going to do a very simple uh, we're going to do a very simple Newton's second law problem uh, and this expands lecture 2c. So this expands the third lecture that I made in uh, chapter 2. So I had my, my car and uh, in my car I went out and I drove it and I went from uh, my initial velocity was 15 miles per hour and then I stomped on the brakes as hard as I could reasonably and I went to zero miles per hour and I did so in a time of 2.2 seconds okay so what we did is we remembered that uh, 15 miles over one hour uh, is going to be equal to what I do is I if I do uh, one mile per hour I'm sorry if I do one meter per second is 2.2 miles per hour sort of a little bit messed up uh, 2.24 I should say 2.24 so if you wanted to if you want to calculate from miles per hour So if you want to go from miles per hour to meters per second, divide by 2.24. So I'm going to end up 15 divided by 2.24 comes up to be uh, like 6. Point, uh, 6.7 meters per second. And then I do XT V I V F A just like <clears throat> chapter two and my distance I don't care about so we're gonna look for the equation that does not have distance my time was 2.2 seconds my V I was 6.7 meters per second my V F was 0 meters per second and this <coughs> acceleration is what we're solving for. So I'm going to use this equation A equals VF minus VI over T. So my A is going to be 0 minus 6.7 meters per second squared I'm sorry no squared meters per second divided by 2.2 seconds and so I'm going to come up with my A is going to be 6.7 divided by 2.2 is going to be negative 3 negative 3 meters per second squared okay so now the big equation from this chapter is F equals M A force equals mass times acceleration so if I want to figure out what force the brakes need to apply to the wheels then I need to know the mass of my car and I know I just sort of looked on the internet and I did a little bit of search you can find in if you haven't if you guys haven't been on the internet yet you should really check it out because it's really it's a really a good resource the mass of my car is about 1.4 times 10 to the third kilograms that's the mass of my car 
and so I've got an acceleration of negative 3 meters per second squared and so I can do this right in my head because I know 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 4 is 12, so 3 times 0.4 is 1.2, so this is going to be negative 4.2 times 10 to the third kilogram meters per second squared, and we're going to remember that we're just, instead of saying kilogram meters per second squared, we're just going to say newtons. Now, if I really want to get fancy about it, I can use one of my little SI prefixes, just trying to tie things in from previous chapters. <clears throat> you should know 10 to the third. Figure out what that SI prefix is right now. Hit pause, go find it. That is 10 to the third. We can simplify that down as kilo. And we, we can put it as a little k. So I can say that my force is negative 4.2 kilo newtons. So the force required to stop my car is negative 4.2 kilonewtons. So if for some reason um, my brakes can't provide that force or then then my wheels are going to continue to turn or they're going to they're not going to, I'm not going to be able to get from 15 miles per hour to zero miles per hour in 2.2 seconds. And um, if the road is really icy and there's not going to be 4.2 kilonewtons of uh, friction between the road and my tires, then I'm also not going to be able to slow down at that speed or slow down at, with that acceleration. Uh, and it's going to take me a little bit longer to stop. Okay, so there's Newton's second law.